Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old prepubescent girl. And he was 54 years old when he did so. <clears throat> when, again, just for the record, when he said had sex, he married her. Mm -hmm. We don't want to give the impression we're saying he just slept with her without marrying her. Be that as it may, a 54-year-old man marries and has sex with a nine-year-old girl. Now, he contracted married marriage with her when she was six years old consummated the marriage, meaning had sex with her to consummate the marriage when she was nine years old. Now again, for the sake of time, let me look at just one hadith from Sahih bukhari Sahih bukhari Volume 5, Number 234. <clears throat> and you can also write down Sahih bukhari Volume 7, Number 64. Sahih bukhari Volume 7, Number 64, but I'm going to read Volume 5, Number 234. Narrated Aisha. Now this is her narration. <clears throat> the Prophet engaged me when I was a girl of six. We went to Medina and stayed at the, at the home of uh, Ban al Harith bin Khazraj. Then I got ill and my hair fell down. Later on, my, when my hair grew again and my mother, Umm Roman, came to me while I was playing in a swing with some of my girlfriends. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. She's still playing on swings. And another narration from Muslim says that she was playing with dolls. So then what happens? They take her in the room and there's Muhammad. So she... They hand her off to Muhammad, then she entrusted me to them, and they prepared me. Unexpectedly, unexpectedly, Allah's Apostle came to me in the forenoon, and my mother handed me over to him, and at that time, I was a girl of nine years of age. A girl playing with dolls, according to Sahih Muslim, and playing on swings, according to Sahih Bukhari, nine years of age, taken by a 54-year-old man to his house in order for him to have sex with her, to consummate the marriage contract. Mm -hmm. And she hadn't reached puberty yet. How do we know? According to the Muslim scholars, and this is found in Bukhari itself, girls are not allowed to play with dolls unless they are minors who haven't attained puberty. Aisha was playing with dolls when Muhammad had sex with her when she was nine, meaning she hadn't reached puberty. And why is that relevant, David? What do you mean? I mean, why is that relevant? that here you have a girl who hasn't reached puberty and Muhammad had sex with her and married her. That's relevant because what would you find in the Quran? Mm -hmm. Chapter 65, verse 4. 65, verse 4 of the Quran allows grown men mm -hmm. to marry minors who haven't had their first menstrual cycle and not only marry them, but divorce them in order that others could then marry them. That's chapter 65, verse 4. In fact, let me just read the verse so that people can get an idea of what we're talking about. If you are in doubt, 65 verse 4, the period of waiting will be three months. It's talking about how long should a divorced woman wait before she can remarry. Now, the historical context is that there are men and women who no longer had their periods. You know, they had reached menopause. And then there were young girls who hadn't had their first period. How long should they wait? Now, here's the response. If you're in doubt, the period of waiting will be three months for those women who have ceased menstruating and for those who have not yet menstruated, did you catch it? Mm -hmm. Women who have not yet menstruated, meaning that they are minors who haven't even had their first menstrual cycle, who've been married and had sex with their husbands, can be divorced so that someone else can then remarry them, provided they wait for three months. Mm -hmm. And what's the example of marrying a minor who hasn't reached puberty? Aisha and Muhammad. When you, asked, when you asked why is this relevant, I was actually thinking in terms of practical consequences that oh, we yeah. observe in the world today. Uh, because in countries like Yemen, well, where it's still common for men to marry uh, prepubescent girls, when the country tries to stop the practice, it's the religious leaders, it's the Muslim theologians who say you cannot stop this because then you're condemning Allah in the Quran and you're condemning Muhammad in his life and you can't do that. And so this is a practice oh which continues to this day specifically because Muslims take Muhammad as a prophet. And so we have to, we have to address this, my friends, ignoring uh, what Muhammad did and what Muhammad taught and protecting him and uh, protecting him and guarding him from criticism. It's uh, people are suffering. People are suffering because of these teachings. All right, so number three that we just went over is that Muhammad had sex with a prepubescent girl, not only had sex with a prepubescent girl, but since he is the prophet whose life has Allah's stamp of approval in Surah 33, verse 21, that Muhammad is the pattern of conduct that Muslims are supposed to follow. This isn't just something bad that Muhammad did. It is something that has affected generation after generation after generation 
of the very people who need protection most, young girls. And they are being victimized. Sometimes they die because they are not ready for this. And it's all justified by Allah and Muhammad. Lord.